Every electrical device in your house needs a complete circuit in order to work. And a complete circuit means you've got a hot wire and you've got a neutral wire. And the hot wire is usually black and the neutral wire is usually white. That's the standard in North America. That doesn't mean you're always going to find it that way. So you're going to need a tester so that you're going to be able to tell for sure whether something is the hot. Now what you're looking at in this diagram is just a simple light that is connected to constant power. And what I mean by that is there's no switch involved here, right? So the power is coming in on the black wire, that's the hot wire, and the neutral wire takes the power back to the panel, and that's what closes the circuit. And as long as you have both of those wires, then everything is good and your light will light up. Now, a situation like this could be that's a ceiling fan that has constant power, or sometimes there are older bathroom lights that had you know, pull chains on them that have constant power, any kind of a device that is constantly powered and does not have a switch on it, that's is what you're gonna find. How would we go about switching this light if we wanted to add a wall switch? Well, first and foremost, we always switch the hot wire, and that's the black wire. Now for simplicity, I'm showing this white wire just going straight through the way that it was in the first diagram. Even though in that box, you will find they are connected something with a wire nut so that both of the white wires are connected and that just passes through. But electrically, it is connected directly to the light. That's all you have to worry about. So I don't muddy up these diagrams with, um, with wire nuts. So what we have here, I'll turn the box off just for clarity. So what we have here is basically this switch goes in the black wire. Okay, and when the switch is in the down position, which in North America, that's off for us. Now, in, of course, in the UK, uh, up is off <laughs> because they're British and they do things <laughs> the opposite of what we do. We've got this toggle switch. They just call it a toggle switch because it's simply an on-off toggle switch. And there's going to be two, usually brass screws, on the toggle switch. And that's where you would put the black wires. The one coming in is the one that brings power into the switch. And the other side is the one that takes it to the light. Now, mind you, a lot of these switches, the screws are on the same side. But I, just for clarity, show it like this, okay? Don't take these things literally. This is not a switch. It's just simply a drawing of a switch, okay? But the principle is the same regardless of where the the screws are. You're going to connect the black wires to either side and when the switch is on it connects the power, it connects those two screws together electrically. That's what completes the circuit and causes the light to, to light up. And when you don't want it on you just flip the switch off and the light goes off. All right so that's a simple toggle switch. I call it a two-way circuit. Now the next scenario is a three-way circuit and we find three-way circuits in multiple areas usually where there's a big room or there's a hallway or something like that and you want to be able to control the same light from two different locations so a three-way circuit has these two switches but they're a little bit different you can see there are three screws on each one of these and maybe that's why they call it a three-way and the way this works is there's a black screw now and the black screw is usually labeled common. And the other screws, which are usually brass, and I keep saying usually because sometimes they're gonna be different depending upon the manufacturer. But either way, if you look at a wiring diagram that comes with the switch, there should be one screw that is different than the others, and that's the common one. And what this does is instead of just turning on and off, which means it connects the top two, it has this other wire Okay, the red wire is introduced. And these two wires are collectively called travelers. And what that means is that this switch determines which one of these wires is connected to that common screw. All right, so let's take for this scenario, let's say that when this switch is in the down position, that the power comes through to the black wire, the one on top. And let's say on the other side, which is exactly the same kind of switch. Now I show it a mirror image here just for clarity, but it's not necessarily that way. But let's say when this switch is in the down position, it connects this common terminal to the red wire down the bottom. Okay, 
If, if it bridges that gap there, then you can see that if these switches are in the down position, that the power is not able to get to the light, and so the light is not on. In order to turn the light on, we would have to flip either one of these switches. And what that does is when I put the switch on the left side, let's say I flip that one up, that's gonna connect these two, the black screw and that red wire, so that the red wire is now energized. Well, remember on the right side, the red wire was connected to the light. Now the power can flow down this black wire to the light and back the neutral and complete the circuit. Okay, this way the circuit is going on the red wire and the light is on. Now, if I flip the B switch, the second switch up, then it connects the common terminal to this black wire on top. But remember, the black wire is not energized, so what happens? The light goes out. These things are contained in boxes, all right? I didn't show the boxes to begin with. And the wiring between the two of them is actually called three conductor wire. All right, you'll see this is labeled as 14.3 or 12.3. The 14 and the 12 say what gauge the wire is. 14 gauge is actually lighter, thinner than 12 gauge wire. 14 gauge is appropriate for 15 amp circuits. 12 gauge needs to be used for 20 amp circuits. All right, so that's what you're gonna find in your home, 15 or 20. You have to look at the circuit breaker and this wire in between should be matched, all of the wiring in this circuit should be matched to the size of the circuit breaker, okay? Don't tell me, oh, Chris, uh, this light is only eight watts. I don't need to use heavy wire. No, you do. You have to use the right gauge wire based on your circuit breaker. But this wire going between them is called three conductor wire because it's got a black, a red, and a white. Those are the three conductors, and it's also got a ground, but the ground is not a conductor. It's just for safety. Now, this is a picture of a real three-way switch. Now, you can see, and this one is a Leventon brand, and uh, you can see that in addition to the ground screw, there are three other screws on it. One is black, and the other two are the brass screws. Now, the black screw is going to be the common, and the brass screws are the ones that are going to go to your travelers and they're not necessarily on the same sides as the way that I drew it. I just drew it that way for simplicity's sake, all right? Regardless of which way the screws are facing, you know, the wiring is the same. So this is the way that I like to wire three-way circuits. So if the switches are both in the same direction, either both down or both up, then the light is off. If either one of them is flipped, the light goes on. Okay? If you have a situation where your switches are flipped and the light is off and you'd want to change it to like this, all you have to do, just pick one of them and turn it over. There's really no top and bottom to three-way switches. They are completely reversible. They can go either side up. My OCD likes it so that if both switches are down, the light is off. All right, let's say you've got a really big room and two switches are not enough. Let's say you want to have a third switch someplace else. Well, you can actually do that. It's called a four-way circuit. And a four-way circuit is just like a three-way circuit, but we insert another switch in the middle. And this switch is a special switch called a four-way switch. So a four-way circuit always has two three-ways and a four-way switch in the middle. Now this one, let me show you a picture of a real one. So this is a Leviton four-way switch, and you'll see there are two black screws and there are two brass screws. And if you're confused as what those are, you should always look for a diagram that comes with the product. So this diagram shows the two three-way switches on the outside. This is where the power comes in, just like my drawing, and this side goes to what they call the load, which I, in my example is a light. It doesn't have to be a light, it could be anything. It could be an outlet, it doesn't matter. But here you can see that it says the common terminals are black screws, okay? Here there's one black screw on a three-way, there's two black screws on a four-way. And, and it shows you that the uh, line one and line two are connected to the black screws. And on the other side are the non-black screws, which in this case are, 
are brass. And that is where you're going to have line one out and line two out. Now, this is a typo here. It says line two out for both of them, but that's not the case. All right. Now, the black screws are on one end and the brass screws are on the other, but that's the Leviton brand. Eaton could be different. Um, any other brand could be different. Okay. There's different brands and you never know. So that's why I always say refer to the diagram to figure it out if you can't figure it out. All right. So in my situation here, I put the black screws on the side and the, the brass screws on the other side. And really what this does is exactly, it, it has two positions in this one position, which I'm showing you now the down position. All it does is connect each of the two wires directly across from each other. Okay. So this case, the black wire is connected to the black wire and the red wire is connected to the red wire. When you flip the switch, it crosses them opposite. So the black wire on the left gets connected to the red wire on the right and the red wire on the left gets connected to the black wire on the right. So it's a crisscross situation. So think about it down straight across up crisscrosses them. So just like before with the switch, the left switch in the down position, that means power is on the black wire, right? So when I add the four way, the four way connects directly across from each other. So the wire is the black wire is still the hot one because the far right switch is in the down position. It's trying to get power off the red wire. Well, there's no power there. So the light is out. If I flip the switch on the right, it pulls power now from that black wire. It connects that to the light and that's what turns on the light because it completes the circuit. If I flip the left switch, you can see same thing happens that the power is now going down to the red wire, but the right switch gets power from the black wire. So what happens? The light goes off. So if they're all in the down position, the lights off, but if they're all in the up position, the light is on. I know, I know it's kind of confusing, but that's why I said this video was so important because you guys need to understand this because in a lot of modern homes, three way and four way switches are very common. So one point about this four way switch and why this is so magical is because you could put as many of these as you want in between the two three ways. Take for example, here's another one. And it works exactly the same way. Flip any one of these switches and that light comes on. So just know that the four way switch is a magical thing. You can insert as many of them as you want. And they basically do the same thing as a three way. And with that, that is everything I wanted to show you about switches in this video. And pretty much every scenario that you could come across has been covered here but I'm sure there are exceptions and you may have questions. And if you do, please leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to get back to you. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one. Hey there, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon to be the first to know when new videos are posted. Look for Handy Dad TV on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram and visit the website handydad.tv for more great ideas and information. 